Well, if you've been playing the mandolin for any stretch of time now, you've probably started to realize that most people who choose to play this instrument, myself included, tend to be gearheads for better or for worse. And you really don't need all those gizmos and gadgets when you're first getting started. All you should need is a pick and a mandolin to start enjoying this instrument and to start getting better. But there are a lot of cool accessories out there that a lot of mandolin players choose to use that might add some value to your time with this instrument as well. What's up folks, if you're new here, my name's David, and in this video we're gonna check out the top seven mandolin accessories that us mandolin players love geeking out about. And along the way, I thought it'd be fun to share the particular items and brands that I like to use, just in case you're interested in my unsolicited opinion about all this. And just to get this out of the way up front here, there are no paid promotions in this video. These are all just items I really like and that I use regularly, if not every day. And I definitely recommend you checking these out too if you haven't already. There's links in the description below for all these items in case you're getting that gear acquisition itch. But let's just get right to it. We'll start off with the more basic standard accessories that probably most mandolin players out there should consider having and then we'll get to the more expensive boutique kind of fancy items later on which are optional but still pretty fun. So here we go. All right, so accessory number one, and beyond the prerequisites of strings and picks, this is the first thing that you should probably invest in for your mandolin, a physical tuner. And I just really like these Diodario Micro Headstock Tuners. In my experience, these tuners from Diodario have always worked well and accurately, and they're just super simple, right? You just snap it on there and forget about it. And the cool thing is about these headstock tuners is that they register the vibrations of the notes along the instrument instead of the sound of the note. So that way you can still tune your instrument in really noisy settings like the jam or at rehearsal, pretty much any situation where you're having to play music with real people, right? And I really just like how discreet these Diodario tuners are. You know, you can get some much fancier ones like this Peterson Strobo Clip tuner for about 70 US dollars, but it's a bit bulky for my taste. Plus I think all tuners like this inevitably break or get lost. So at just around 15 bucks, you can't beat the Diodario Micro. The second accessory that all mandolin players should have is a good strap. And for the past few years, I've been using this leather mandolin strap from a great company in the UK called Pine Grove. In the past, I've used one of those narrow braided leather straps that's kind of like a rope, but I've realized that the smaller the surface area of the strap, the more the mandolin tends to move around on my body. And that's the biggest challenge about playing while standing is just that jostling factor, right? So that's why I really dig this Pine Grove strap. You know, this strong, sturdy, wide piece of leather makes the mandolin feel a little bit more secure on my body and just makes things a lot more comfortable. It's also got a really handy adjustable length mechanism here and it comes with an end pin adapter. So even if you've got a really wide end pin like I do for this internal pickup, it just sits on there really securely. Pine Grove makes these for both A and F models and they run at about 50 pounds plus international shipping, depending on where you are. So it's a little bit pricey for a strap, but I think it's really worth the investment, especially if you see yourself standing for any amount of time at the jam circle or on stage. Next for number three, if you've been playing mandolin for a little while now and you've gotten to know anything about the horrors of changing mandolin strings, then you'll probably want one of these bad boys. This is a handmade mandolin string winder from Luthier Lynn Dudenbostel. Having to wind down all these eight strings by hand is such a pain and takes forever, but as soon as you have one of these string winders, the work is super quick. And what I love about this particular string winder is that it was built specifically for the smaller tuner buttons on a mandolin. Whereas if you buy a cheaper guitar string winder, it's gonna be a lot bigger and it's gonna probably be banging against the adjacent tuner buttons on your mandolin, which might cause some damage. This winder costs about 45 to 50 US dollars if I remember correctly, but it's totally worth it if it makes that overwhelming task of changing your strings even just a little bit more tenable. <laughs> On to number four here, and if you've taken that plunge and invested in a pretty decent mandolin, you're probably also gonna want a humidifier to keep that mandolin in good condition. And I just use this really simple damp it humidifier. Now to be honest, I don't really worry about the humidity of my mandolin too much, and maybe that's a shortcoming of mine, but granted I have lived in the southeastern states for most of my life where the climate's humidity is about 100% all year round. But whenever I go out to California or Colorado, anywhere with a drier climate, I definitely notice a big change in my instrument. So if you live in one of those drier climates or somewhere cold where you're having to pump dry heat throughout your house a lot, then that's something to worry about because there's a danger of the moisture being sucked out of the wood of the instrument, which could cause some setup issues at best, but even worse, it could cause the wood to crack. So especially back when I was living in Boston, this was something I used a lot. This damp it humidifier is basically just a green rubber noodle with a sponge in the center. So you soak this in water, you dry it off, then you stick this in the F hole like this and you put your mandolin in its case overnight and it reabsorbs a lot of that moisture that's been lost. And maybe it's more of a placebo than anything else, but I can definitely tell a difference after I've done this. The mandolin just feels and sounds a little bit better. There are some really intense high-tech humidification systems out there if you're in one of those drier climates, but for me, since I live here in the South, this $15 damp it really does the trick for me. 
All right, for the last three items on our list, we're moving more towards the esoteric side of things. But in a way, these accessories mean more to me because they really affect the way that I experience the mandolin. And number five is a big one. This is a handmade armrest by Luthier Dan Voigt from Nashville, Tennessee. And what I love about armrests is that it makes the mandolin feel a lot more substantial and comfortable, right? Otherwise, without this, you'd be kind of digging in with your forearm along this hard edge of the binding, which isn't that nice for extended sessions. There's a bunch of similar designs out there from folks like McClung and Banjo Lit Armrests, and they all kind of use this same hardware here to attach to the side of this instrument. I think this is actually the same mechanism that they use for violin chin rests as well. But what I really love about this particular armrest is that there's a nuanced steep incline that Dan designed in this one which really sets your arm up at the right spot that you want it to be at to meet the strings with the pick. And basically since I got this thing, it's been my main point of reference to know where the strings are with my pick. I have more of a floating right hand approach, but with one of these things, I just always put my forearm on the instrument at the same place every time I pick up the mandolin, which means that I'll be playing more accurately. Depending on what wood you choose for your armrest, this can run you anywhere between $50, $75, $100, but in my opinion, a fantastic purchase if you wanna up your game a bit. Probably the most common question that I get when people see me play the mandolin is, what's that fancy cage on the back of your instrument? And to answer that valid question, we have number six on our list, which is a tone guard. This fancy little contraption just slides onto the back of your mandolin like so, and the main purpose here is just to keep the mandolin away from your midriff. You know, there's all sorts of vibrations that are going on through the wood of this instrument as you're playing it. So if you have it against your clothes like this, it's gonna dampen or mute the sound. So the tone guard, like the name suggests, is supposed to guard your mandolin from losing any volume or tone. And I know there are some people who are a little skeptical about this item in particular, and partly because of that $70 price tag for what seems just like a hunk of metal, right? But I'm a huge proselyte of this accessory, and there are a lot of pro mandolin players out there who choose to use this thing as well. And a big reason why I like this thing is that even if it doesn't make a difference to anyone else, it really helps me hear the mandolin better. And whenever I'm jamming or on stage and having to compete with some loud banjos and fiddles, that makes all the difference because if you can't hear yourself, it's kind of like, what's the point, right? So Tone Guard, check it out in the link below. Which brings us to the last and biggest item on our list, which is a mandolin case. Now, obviously when you're first starting out, you should have at least something to put your mandolin in whenever you go outside the house, whether it be a cloth gig bag or a cardboard case or whatever. But I put this item last because the more serious you get about the mandolin, the more you go out to those muddy bluegrass festivals or the rowdy jams, or maybe you start traveling long distance with the mandolin, especially on airplanes and all that, you're gonna wanna invest in a really sturdy, substantial travel case like this. And these can cost a pretty penny. <laughs> and ever since I started touring with Mile 12, I've been using this custom fitted carbon fiber Hoffy mandolin case, which will run you about $850. So obviously if your mandolin doesn't cost that much, you probably don't need to buy one of these. But what I love about this case is that it's pretty much bomb proof here, right? You can see that I've already gone through some battles with this one here and this is extra padded. It's water resistant. It's shock resistant. You can do pretty much anything to these cases and it'll still keep your mandolin safe. And all things considered, this case is pretty lightweight and it's compact enough to fit in an overhead compartment on an airplane, which is a huge bonus. I've actually only had to check my mandolin one time, which was really scary, but this case worked wonders. My mandolin made it through no problem. But again, a fancy case like this isn't necessary, right? It just brings me a lot of peace of mind to know that wherever my music takes me, my mandolin's gonna be safe in this thing. But if you're looking for a more affordable option, I'd really recommend checking out the Northfield Heirloom mandolin cases. Northfield's doing some really cool things for the mandolin these days. And hey, if you've made it this far in the video, here's a bonus accessory item for the list. Number eight is mandolin swag. And if you dig this video and you wanna support the content here on the channel while showing off your inner hipster mandolin street cred, you can grab some sweet Mandolin Monday swag at our Teespring store at the link in the description below. Or another way to get involved is to join us over on Patreon where we have this awesome learning community of several hundred mandolin players, which still kind of blows my mind, but shout out to all of you amazing patrons. Patreon is where I share even more mandolin content like PDF transcriptions, backing tracks, other goodies. So check it out in the link above if you haven't already. Hey, but that's all for this video. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to leave a comment below if there are other mandolin accessories that you've been using recently. But until then, I'll see you in the next one.